the best, you know, if you're into Formula One racing, the best overtake maneuvers happen at corners where cars with the best brakes can drive faster, longer, and take the corner safer. And that's what cybersecurity should be. We should be the brakes on the business, not to slow it down, not to stop it, but to enable it to, to do what it needs to do in a safe and secure way and navigate it, 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 its way through. So we shouldn't be saying no, we should be saying yes, but this is how we need to do it. And these are the risks we need to do. And this you know, and that approach can you know, get more buy-in. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the 401 Access Die podcast. I'm the host of the episode, Joe Carson, Chief Security Scientist, Advisory CISO at Delinea. And I'm really, this, this episode has been a long time coming. This one has been something that has been in my mind for a long, long time. And I'm, you know, it's, it's such a special moment because I have got such an amazing guest on the show today. Uh, someone who I've known now, I don't know if you realize it's now 23 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, that long. Whoa. That's, 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 it's, it's quite scary when you, when you think about it. Is I've it, known you longer than my kids. <laughs> <laughs> and my kids and my wife. <laughs> so, so. Um, so welcome, Brian, to the show. Um, you know, just give give the audience a bit of a background of who you are, how you get in the industry, and what you do. Yeah. So, uh, Joe, thanks for having me. It's great, great to be here. So, uh, yeah, my name's Brian Honan. Uh, I'm CEO of BH Consulting. So we're a independent cybersecurity and data protection advisory company based in Dublin, Ireland. But we have clients all over the world and. We offer a range of uh, services from uh, virtual CISOs, virtual DPO, uh, advisory services on anything to do with cybersecurity and with uh, data protection and privacy. And uh, yeah, I've been in the industry for a while now. Uh, I've been in, working in IT since the 80s. Uh, so I, yeah, my start in security i was going to say cyber security but it wasn't cyber security back then it wasn't even information security it wasn't even it security it was just security um, it was the key to the room with the, with the computer <laughs> it was, well, when i started my job was looking after uh wang mini systems in the right. company i worked with which was a, a large life assurance company in ireland called irish life uh, mm -hmm. so they had wang mini systems and an ibm mainframe that was the computer environment back then uh so basically centralized computers with dumb terminals uh yeah. old mcdonald douglas vt 100s all, all <laughs> the the connections. so uh, <laughs> uh but i was worked the team I worked in was called Office Technologies, uh, mm -hmm. and it was true there that the first PCs were introduced into Irish life. And uh, so my career has evolved over the decades as IT has evolved and as, as, as computers evolved. And uh, as we went into the 90s and we had downsizing or right sizing from a, a IT point of view, um, more data, more systems are moved off the mainframes onto mini systems, onto PCs, onto LANs, etc. And uh, my role was making sure those systems worked and were secure. So yeah, that's that's how I've been involved. And in just over the years, it's <laughs> changed as we kept going. You know, absolutely. It's it's, it's a, a continuous learning. It's one thing you never stop learning, and there's always something new. And there's new technology, you know, new distribution. Um, you know, the foundation is always kind of similar, uh, but how you apply it tends to evolve slightly. Yeah. You know, it's the, the best it, it, practices. It, it, you know, it's quite funny to say that, Joe, because yeah. uh, last Wednesday night, we actually had a reunion dinner with the team I worked with in Irish Life. And the last time <laughs> we were all together was 34 years ago. Whoa. Uh, so uh, it was a good night of reminiscence. And, and somebody asked me that question, you know, how have things changed from a security point of view? And I actually laughed and I said, it's very funny. A lot of the basics we had way, way back then, access control, privilege access management, uh, backups, uh, perimeter protection and stuff, the fundamentals and the basics are still the same as we had back then. But as you said, applying it now is and how you apply it is differently. And yeah, look, it's, it's an in industry that, if you want to be continuously challenged, it's a great place to be because 
as you said, John, not only does the technology changes, but how businesses apply and use that technology changes as well. And even how society uses technology. Back when I started in the 80s and 90s, nobody had home computers. Nobody had smartphones. We had no tablets. There was no internet. There, you know, uh, We didn't have smart devices in our houses. We didn't have smart cars. We None of that stuff. Uh, so how technology is being used, like technology changes, but how it's being used and how it becomes ingrained in our personal and business lives changes as well. And the threat landscape changes, you know. Absolutely. The motives and the attackers the change their techniques all the time. And, exactly. And, you know, it's where they're coming from as well. You know, it's. I, I remember seeing a funny meme just recently where it was like, you know, how you unfollowed people in the 90s was you, you got your, your house phone and you, you took it off. You, <laughs> you just took it off the hook. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's how you got peace and quiet. That's how you disconnected from the internet was you got your phone and you just took it off yeah. so that no one could call you. Um, but that, absolutely, you know, it's, it's, it's evolved quite a lot. And even through my times, uh, I've seen a lot of changes from uh, even, even the 90s where it was very centralized to decentralized and then back to centralization again. Um, and how people are applying it. How the, I think the big thing, though, what I've changed is that the change is how the impact can have. It's such more severe now than I remember. You know, your SLAs back in the 90s could have been a couple of days. You know, you could have had some things where, you know, the urgency was not so much there. But now businesses have become so dependent on digital services that even minutes can have, you know, severe impacts. Yeah, no, Jules, I think it's interesting as well. You talk about, you know, if you like the the what's old is new and what's new is old, and and you know, we've gone decentralized and centralized. But I'd actually think we've now gone to a decentralized centralized model yep. because people talk about, oh yeah, we're back in the eighties, nineties with mainframes, and now we've got the cloud, so we've now gone back to centralized computing, but not really, hmm. because back in the eighties and nineties. When you had a centralized computing model, it was in your own data center on your own Co system. Correct, correct. It was plugged it into your own power supply. <laughs> yeah, and, but it, it wasn't, you know, uh, we've got one part of our business, critical part of our business with one cloud service provider, and we've got another one with another cloud service provider, and we've another part with somebody else. And we also now have remote workers and uh, people connecting from devices we don't know anything about. So, yeah, you can talk about maybe it's centralized but it's it's not really it's it's Absolutely. probably more distributed than ever it's it's just a decentralized centralization <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna trademark that one <laughs> the decentralized centralized perimeter there we go we've, we've got a new we've got a new model we, you know, we've got a new buzzword we can use exactly just gonna say that. we're always missing marketing terms and i think marketing really have you know they're missing a few new key yeah. items uh, you know, we've 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 had that whole pendulum from blockchain to was it to AI, and now you know we we're missing something. You know, yeah. zero trust has kind of come and gone. I was just going to say, Joe, we, we we can call it now because zero trust is dead. The new <laughs> thing now is, is decentralized centralized yeah. perimeters. <laughs> oh, fantastic! So for one of the one of the great things is that you know when I get to chat with you, it brings back so many memories. For so the audience probably don't know. You know, I did mention at the beginning. Yeah. That we've known each other longer than our kids and, our, and my <laughs> wife. Um, that we go back, you know, 23 years. I remember it was, uh, I, I was just coming off the back of Y2K and patching the ambulance services systems. And I remember standing in the uh, the emergency call room because the ambulance service was responsible for the call, the call center, for distributing the calls to the uh, fire, to uh, police, and, and also uh, ambulance and paramedics. And uh, I remember even standing, you know, in the control room, waiting for that, you know, the midnight, the millennium clock, <laughs> and just waiting for nightmare to happen. Because at that point, you know, you just fear. I, there was there was emergency calls coming in. I remember, like, you know, it's different, it was interesting hearing the calls. But I just standing there in fright about what was potentially going to happen. And it just came and and it went with with nothing. Yeah. Um, but I think that. That's that's a good analogy for how a good cybersecurity program works. Yes. You know, you, you only know you only know cybersecurity is 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 around when it fails. That 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 that's if you're doing a good job. And Y two K, as an IT industry, I think we 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 everybody done a great job. There's so much work went into prep, oh. prep prepping for that and getting ready for it and uh, being prepared. So 
a big event became a non-event and it kind of like was, well, what was the big deal about, you know? And It's, it's because we did our job. <laughs> yeah, and then with cyber security, cyber security, the same thing as well. You know, we're saying this is a big business threat, and yeah. people only sit up and pay attention when it goes wrong. You know, like here in Ireland last year, we had the HSE ransomware attack, which took down the whole health system for the the, the country, and then people go, "Oh my God, yeah, it's it's yeah. really serious." And then this year, I was reading the World Economic Forum uh, Cybercrime Report, and it had the top five risks per country, mm-hmm. and in Ireland. Cyber is not mentioned, even though twelve months ago, it's, 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 it, the, every, the 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 priority changes so quickly. It does. <laughs> so it does. The, yeah. So, but it, it, it just uh, for me, absolutely. You know that I, I still I think I've still got my Y two K floppy disk somewhere because I, I I spent so many times just going around putting that in so many computers yeah. and just patching the systems. And you're absolutely right. Is that when there's you know sometimes we have to sometimes stop and think you know and thank the security team. When it is quiet, <laughs> because yes. that's that's one that's one that's when you can celebrate. Um, so, quick question: So, what what do you see? You know, I, I read the the World Economic uh, Cyber Outlook uh, report. Um, you know, cyber was up there as again a top risk, and, mm-hmm. and I think even it was even to the point where they were looking at major catastrophe type of impact over the next two to three years. Yeah, what you know, what types of threats do you see as is the things that businesses should be worried about today? Uh, what's what's the you know, things that they should be you know prioritizing and, and defending against? Yeah, so look, uh, I, I wear several hats, I suppose. One, as I said, I'm CEO of BH Consulting, and we have helped victims of cyber crime and cyber attacks recover the systems. But I also founded and head up iResearch, Ireland's first computer emergency response team, and I've, I've I'm an advisor to several other companies and stuff for like that. So, but quite common across a lot of them, the main threats I see. Right now, ransomware is the number one threat. Uh, and it's 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 simply because it's the quickest and easiest way for cyber criminals to monetize their, their work. You know, like uh, uh, they can make money very quickly. And the urgency is there. And the, you know. Uh, urgency, like they're criminals. They want to make money. Yeah. And you know, they want to make it quickly and they want to make it easy. So, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, hacking into a system, stealing credit card data, personal data, uh, trying to monetize that Mm -hmm. and sell it on or hacking in and stealing intellectual property Mm -hmm. and trying to monetize that. That's still happening. Don't get me wrong. That is still happening. But it's a lot. That's a more long game uh, and long time to return. Ransomware, it's it's in your face. Your systems are down. Mm Either you, you know, and the, from the criminal point of view, either you pay us the money, or, 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 or you, you don't. Re, you're rebuilding. You're rebuilding, or yeah. you hope that the backup is is solid enough that exactly. you have something to recover. You know, so, so, and, so the criminals are out there. Yeah. They're looking to make money, and they're looking at ways to, and they're even altering their models. So it's not just uh, uh, holding your, mm-hmm. your your data to ransom. It's also well, if you don't pay, if you don't pay this ransom, you won't. We won't uh, give you the credit keys to decrypt your data but also mm-hmm. here's another ransom so we don't publish it on the internet yeah. oh and by the way we're also, also ransoming your customers your customers as well <laughs> yeah and that's happened in, in some cases you know uh, where the criminals have yeah. gone to customers of those companies and said we've got your personal data if you don't pay up we're going to put it on the internet and i've heard of cases where criminals have gone through emails of companies and mm-hmm. have identified uh Unethical, or in some cases even illegal behavior, and threaten yeah. the companies to, to and blackmail them, saying, you know, we've got we we released this to the regulator if you if you don't pay up. So criminals just want to make money, and yeah. that's why ransomware is is going to continue to be the biggest threat. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I do have a a bone to pick with our industry about ransomware. You know, like <laughs> we've, we we are, what would this be if we, if we didn't have a bone to pick? If I didn't have a rant, exactly. <laughs> uh, and I think one of the things ransomware is, in many ways, is a very big red flag to show how our, our how our industry has failed. You know, uh, ransomware at its core is just another piece of malicious software. It's 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 nothing fantastic. Yes, you know we joked out around about the marketing people, but yet we have companies making new products to stop ransomware. And you're going, well, shouldn't that be built into your security product already? You know, so all these security products we bought, 
and how we manage our IT, what ransomware is actually highlighting is how badly as an industry we are failing to protect our data. Uh, because fundamentally, a lot of the, if you look at a lot of the ways to protect and uh, prevent ransomware, it's all the stuff we joked about at the beginning. It's the basic it's stuff. The, it's the basic. It's, it's the, the backup. things we're... It's privilege access. <laughs> it's access control. It's, you know... Good, good, yet, good, good password choices. Uh, exactly. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's getting in there. So ransomware, I see, has been the number one. The other one we're seeing is social engineering, but particularly in CEO or invoice redirection fraud. Yeah, uh, so, and business email compromise and uh, changing, modifying yeah. uh, invoices, uh, yes. changing the routing of those payments. Yeah. But what we're seeing, what we're seeing a change now as well is not just on email compromise, but mm -hmm. uh, using other messaging platforms. Because you know, we've joked Joe that you and I are older <laughs> people in the industry, and you know. There's other channels that people are, are using nowadays. It's 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 social media, WhatsApp, yeah. other messaging systems, and criminals are impersonating CEOs and senior people on those platforms and targeting people in the organization. Mm -hmm. So we've seen uh, uh, business, uh, you know, in, uh, fraudulent behavior from criminals mm -hmm. who have created fake WhatsApp profiles yeah. of, of the company CEO and sent that message then to. To, to staff uh, via, via WhatsApp or whatever and getting getting them to buy uh, gift, gift cards gift and card. numbers, or, yeah, that's, or to process it or to process yeah. a uh, an invoice uh, quickly you know so that's where we see a lot of so messaging mm -hmm. platforms are going to be abused to 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 facilitate fraud because now let's not put a fancy name on this. It's yeah. fraud. It's not it's, you know it, it, email it's, compromise. <laughs> invoice redirect. It's fraud. Right? It's, it's fraud. Fraud is. It's always getting. I always like to try and distinguish. One of the things I, I learned from you uh, was always uh -oh. make sure you, you distinguish. You know the, the the technique from the motive. What what is what is your other underlying category? And yeah. I also learned it as well in Estonia when when, when I remember one of the cases working in in two thousand seven when Estonia had that the cyber attack, um, and one of the Recovery. The reason why I always get into is always make sure you understand what what category it falls under. One of the banks, when they did basically the remediation to a DDoS attack, was that basically they brought up a secondary system. So a DDoS attack, they brought up basically a secondary uh, transactional system, and that was actually their worst mistake, because ultimately the DDoS was not consistent. The production system was up and down, up and down, up and down. And the backup system was also, you know, taking the transactions. They ended up having two systems where the source of truth of transactions went through. And it meant that the DDoS attack lasted for a few days, but it meant that they had to now maintain two production systems for the rest of the financial year. And that was more costly than actually if they just waited out to the, actually the DDoS attack itself. So they actually created a bigger problem by not looking at what it was they're dealing with. They, they just looked at their thing, okay, we've got a service outage. The production system is unavailable. What's our what's our to-do list say? It says bring up the backup system, make it production, turn it you know, from, uh, was it an active standby to an active? And that ultimately was the worst case. So, you know, and even you know, going back, that's what I always remember is always make sure you, you'd fully understand it. What is the motive here? What's, what's the intention? Um, business email compromise is just one of the techniques they use in order to, to get to financial fraud. Yeah, it's, it's uh, exactly. Yeah, and then I suppose the other threats we we I see uh, people business need to be worried about is, uh, oh, with so many businesses have migrated to the cloud, uh, primarily as a, as a as a re, uh, in response to uh, uh, the pandemic, COVID nineteen pandemic, and to facilitate remote working, etc., is account hijacking. Uh, so be that you've moved your email to a a cloud email provider or your CRM system or whatever, we're seeing a lot of uh, attacks trying to compromise. So either brute force attacks uh, or the next threat then is is targeting the people in your organization is is trying to fish credentials or get to click on links or, or, or whatever else. Uh, so yeah, there to me they'd be the top four ransomware. Uh, uh, Fraud. I wasn't yeah. going to call fraud, it. What's it called? What's it called? Financial fraud. <laughs> financial fraud. Uh, cloud cloud account hijacking and um, uh, target target individuals. And like all of those kind of overlap as well because they're you know controls you can put in place mm -hmm. that can reduce the risk 
based on each one of those, you know. So uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's going to keep us busy for quite a while. <laughs> it, it, it definitely, it definitely is. And I mean, I've, I've even been having fun with ChatGPT as well about helping it make craft interesting <laughs> messages yeah. for me. So asking this way, can you help me create an email? You know, <laughs> and it'll actually create it for you. That will yeah. actually be perfect. That you know, it looks authentic. So. Even you know, for me, it's 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 just natural language understanding and automation. Um, it's just it's a simple way of creating without me having to do the work, um, and it's yeah. great at doing that. I, I've seen that also evolving, where it's helping uh, much more on the automation side. Yeah, well, look, in, in fairness as well as uh, uh, you don't need ChatGTP to uh, craft <laughs> a, uh, an email that's to, to get some, to convince somebody to click on a link or whatever. It's uh, when you investigate some of these issues and you just see what the email was that came in it's it's it can be very basic uh, yeah and and uh, even for my because uh, i i myself get targeted quite a lot from you know the, the phishing scams and it's also looking and i'm pretty sure you you are also you know you, you probably get a lot of them as well it's getting it is getting quite difficult to distinguish you know some of them are well crafted and oh they are. Uh, yeah and, and kind of and also have really you know good ways of bypassing a lot of the filters so it does get to the person ultimately uh, yeah. so um, that's also an area that uh, we have to really look at. Yeah, so one of the things. So just, just kind of nicely loose back into my rant earlier on as well. Yeah. Like it gets the person, and then somebody clicks on a, a link or an attachment, and it brings down the whole environment. You know, like, and everybody goes, "Oh my God, that user clicked on a link. It was their fault." No, it's not. It's we didn't have the right controls in place. We didn't have the right that's... protections in place. Your your whole co company shouldn't grind to a halt just because somebody does what an email is designed to do you know emails were designed to have attachments to have links in them <laughs> the people internet click was, on links they click the on attachments created to click on things it was, yeah you know <laughs> the whole the whole purpose of the browser exactly. was to click on um, yeah. was to make life easy um so absolutely I, that's one of that's one of the things i hate is is human you know blaming it on users yeah and we have the that's for me i think one of the things we have to as an industry get away from um, and start looking about we're, we're really there to help them. We're there to navigate them in the right way. And, and you know, clicking on a link should not, you know, ha have a path to taking the business down. Yeah. <laughs> it no, should not have that. Mean, even if you use the, if you think of the phrases we use in IT, like we call people users. As far as I'm aware, there's only two industries that call their people, their, their, yeah. their customers users, <laughs> IT and drug dealers. <laughs> You know, it's, it's the similarities are so so it's so aligned. It so. is, you know, like we're probably, and you know, then we wonder why people don't yeah. like us when we go and try and fix things. <laughs> well, that's why we, we we created in IT. We created a whole industry, which is the help test team, to to be the immediate you know filter between between IT and people yeah. in the organization. So, <laughs> so one of the, one of the things I wanted to ask you on today's uh, episode as well was that you know you do a lot around uh, compliance and you know standards and stuff. Yeah. How important is that for businesses? How how important is it for organizations? Is is compliance the goal, or is it really to find themselves in some type of you know where do they sit or where's the risks exposed to yeah. what, what's what's the path what, what how, how, do, how do organizations do it right what's the right path well i think joe we could we could tie up a few episodes just talking about compliance and i know there's a lot of uh, uh various views out there and I look up my point is you can be compliant doesn't mean you're going to be secure you could also be secure doesn't mean you're compliant i think you've identified the key thing there is that risk is it, it, it is the key thing to run in a good security program that takes compliance into account as well um, and compliance is going to become a much bigger thing you know when people think about compliance from a cyber security point of view we think oh pci gdpr well if you're going to be operating in the eu or doing any business in the eu there's a lot more regulations coming down that are going to make uh, your life much more uh, uh, Difficult. You, you, you have the Digital Services Act, you have the uh, Cybersecurity Act, the Cybersecurity Strategy, you've um, uh, DORA, you've got various other regulations coming through, which are going to impact not just the end users of technology, but also the suppliers of technology. So, you know, regulation is, is coming in to try and raise the bar that companies should meet. To protect information and you know people complained about pci oh my god uh, when it came out first of all oh my god what pci is it's really tough to get to get 
to get to PCI. And I'm going, no, PCI is what you should have in place anyway. And many of, you know, it's many regulatory frameworks are just saying, look, good security, this is what you need to have in place. But uh, from a business point of view, uh, I think firstly, you need to look at your whole cybersecurity program as a frame as to how are we managing risk to the business? How are we managing risk to the organization? So obviously a lot of that risk is going to be technical risk. We talked about ransomware and stuff like that, but then there's also human risk. You know, so, you know, financial fraud via email or via WhatsApp messages or via... Even uh, voice today. even in Or voice or world. video calls or, you know, uh, AI or whatever. It's... Uh, it's targeting the human, but it's mm-hmm. still there's still processes that happen outside of IT. You know, like issuing a a, a payment and authorizing mm-hmm. the payment and etc. There should be checks and balances there that don't necessarily rely on cybersecurity controls. I, and I think, same then with uh, your uh, compliance. Like, what um, regulations apply to your business, and yeah. how do you match that match that into your cybersecurity framework? And communicate that to the board mm-hmm. and communicate that to senior management so they understand, oh, okay, so we're doing this to manage this risk. Mm-hmm. You know, as opposed to sort of saying, oh, look, we get 1 million attacks on our firewall per day, so we need to buy another firewall. Like, they just go, mm-hmm. what? You know, <laughs> for if, you, if you can talk in business risk if and business terms. Yeah. That, that, so, that so you got me thinking about a very important thing, and it was always something that I always did uh, is is a practice myself. And I think in IT and in, in in you know digital and security that we probably have to do better at it. I think one of the things that I find is that one of the, what distinguishes you know from the the criminals that goes in and, and and does this, what they do really well is they don't just understand the technology really well; they understand your business really well. And I think that's where probably the gap is is that we in the IT tend to focus more on the technology side and the attackers, what they do is they go in. They, you just look back and, and the, uh, I'm trying to remember the, the guy that um, it was either Lithuanian or a Latvian that basically did the financial fraud for Meta, Google, and, you know, basically was just changing the invoices and sending invoices and, and, and just understood the financial payments really well in those organizations to take advantage of it. Um, and I think that's what criminals are doing really well is they start to understand the business processes really well and find weaknesses in them and take advantage of that. And I don't think, I think that's what we should be doing more is trying to understand about how, you know, how does the processes work in the organization, not just from the technology, but ultimately the end to end service and find out where the risks are in that, whether it being, you know, people or whether it being, you know, where's the checks and balances to make sure that we minimize the risk where possible. Yeah, and look, and, so, and sometimes people might say, you, you know, to you, you're getting outside your 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 box. You should be st- stuck over there with <laughs> IT and cybersecurity. Don't be coming to us about financial controls and stuff. But I think this is where we we need as as we evolve in cybersecurity mm-hmm. to become more uh, critical and like critical of the business is mm-hmm. it's help and manage business risk, and we need to get allies uh, out there. Mm-hmm. You know, so instead of going in and sort of saying. Uh, no, you can't do this because of security. Well, then it's as you said, Joe. It's it's talking to to that person who's running that project and saying, well, what what are you trying to achieve? What is the business reason behind this? Okay, uh, you know, like I often use the the story and the analogy about uh, saying that security is like brakes on a car. And when I ask mm-hmm. people, what does a brake do? Brakes on a car do? They all say, well, it's, yeah, that makes sense. Brakes in a car and security because it slows things down or it stops things. And I go, no, brakes in a car make you go faster. And they look at me go, what? <laughs> brakes make, you know, your brakes in your car make you go faster. And I says, yeah, think about it. If you, you know no brakes are... on your car, how fast could you drive? <laughs> you know, uh, the best, you know, if you're into Formula One racing, the best overtake maneuvers happen at corners for cars with the best brakes can drive faster, longer, and take the corner safer. And that's what cybersecurity should be. We should be the brakes on the business, not to slow it down, not to stop it, but to enable it to, to do what it needs to do in a safe and secure way and navigate it, 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 its way through. So we shouldn't be saying no. We should be saying yes, but this is how we need to do it. And these are the risks we need to do. And this you know, and that approach can you know, get more buy-in and 
you know, you know, even when I'm talking at, at some seminars, I, I often ask the CISOs in the audience or IT security people in the audience, how many of you have read your company's annual report? Are many of you aware of what the business plan is for the business or what its business goals are? And sadly, very few hands go up in the audience. Uh, but if, if you're to ask that same question, and I have done because I've, I've talked to audiences that have been in financial people or, or whatever, because they're looking to get, become more aware about cybersecurity. And I've asked them, well, how many of you have read the annual report? And the majority of their hands go up. So if we want to champion cybersecurity and we want cybersecurity to be taken seriously within the business, well, then we have to take business seriously Absolutely. as well. And, and we have to ask the right questions and, and correct. get more involved. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's one of the things that because one of the things I've done is whatever industry I'm working in, I try to put myself in the, the person's position to understand about what it's like to be in their shoes, what it's yeah. like to be in the day-to-day -day activities. So one is it helps me understand about uh, the environment they work in. Um, what they're one the other thing is also how they get measured for success. Because people people don't get measured for security, they get measured in how well they do their job. And my goal is always about how how I can make sure that what I'm doing helps them be successful. Um, and that's ultimately, I think that's the translation that we're always missing. And I think that's yeah. an important point is to, to, to make sure that we as an industry also really understand what, what is the ultimate business goals um, and try to align ourselves to that and try to ask the right questions um, and also measure security in, in such a way that actually shows the value to, to, those, to those business goals as well. No, absolutely. And, and we need to design controls that are are not blockers to people. You know, like, like I've I've dealt with, with security instance where, you know, there's been a data leak because somebody uh, was working remotely or a salesperson out on the road decided, you know, to in order to, to log into the in, to get email, they have to log into the VPN and they have to have a token to plug into their, their, their computer. They have to have a, a a password to log into the laptop, a password to log into the VPN, and then, oh, now you have to have another password to log into your email. And, uh, you know, they just go, oh, to hell, I'll just set forwarding rules on my email to my Gmail account and pick it up yeah. from there or my other online account. Oh, they so make you, all the passwords the same. <laughs> I'll make all the passwords the same, yeah. You know, it's, uh, uh, and it's not that people want to... Uh, do their jobs in security. They just want to do their jobs. So we Absolutely. need to make sure we, we're putting things in place that are transparent mm -hmm. and the user experience is is pleasant, yeah. you know? So was, yeah, one, one thing you just mentioned, really important uh, measurement. And we, you know, one of the things you mentioned, you talked about earlier about how, you know, how many, uh, you know, attacks to the firewall block. But one of the things I remember talking to a few CISOs and, and they started talking about some of their new metrics that they're looking at and it's user experience is about how well is the user enjoying security? <laughs> what is their net promoter score for security? And it's always ironic. It's like, but that's a great measurement because the more people that enjoy using it, because I think to your point about how, you know, having all of those steps just makes the great friction. And ultimately the, the idea is that we need to be re removing friction. You know, whenever we put something new in place, it should always be looking at how do we how do we make it better than what they ha had before. Um, and, you know, and, and security we find security is always hard. That it, it does create friction, but we always have to think about how does it how we make it better. How can we make it better for that person so that this experience is actually better for them, um, and therefore the, the, that they don't see security as a blocker. They see it as, as something that becomes almost just you know in the background. Um, that doesn't, you know, cause them to to you know not hit their goals and metrics and, and not get their bonus or not get you know their what their what their you know performance uh, outlook is for the year. Um, so that's to your point is that security needs to be quiet. <laughs> it does, you know. You, 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 you shouldn't notice. It. You know, you shouldn't notice security. It, it should be, you know, it's like driving your car. You don't yeah. you don't notice the crumpled zones or the airbags or anything else uh, until you absolutely need it. Yeah. And yeah. You know, you don't need to be an engineer to make sure those things work in your car either. <laughs> Absolutely, it just it just needs to be there when when the bad things happen. Exactly, um, and it makes yeah. it makes the biggest difference. So, for organizations and stuff that's going down this path, what what would be the top thing that we'd recommend for them to do? What would be that one thing that you know how to get started, or, or you know, should you know one of the big things they have a lot of problems with is things like getting resources today. You know, who's the right people? Should they try doing this alone? Should 
should they get help? Um, what what's what, kind of what would you recommend an organization? What would be the top? Thing? As a, yeah, that's a very big question, Joel. I don't think there's a simple answer <laughs> to it. I, I think it depends yeah. on the Their industry business. you're in. It, it depends on the resources you have. It depends on uh, 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 which country you're in as well. Some countries have good government-led initiatives. Mm -hmm. Others don't. Uh, I'm falling behind. And I've, and I've just realized I've just given you the typical consultant answer by saying that <laughs> it depends. You know? It depends. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I would strongly recommend anybody who's listened to this now, whether they're in Europe or elsewhere, that there's a lot of great resources available on the European Agency for Cybersecurity, uh, ENISA. So that's ENISA.eu. Uh, they have a whole lot of information there on not just what you need to do from a technical point of view to, to, to manage security, but also from uh, risk and the different uh, regulations and stuff that are coming through, how to, how to manage risk, how to manage the cloud, uh, how to do good incident response. Um, like uh, uh, like I'm involved in some of the working groups uh, with Anisa, and one one of the latest publications that they came out last year was a a complete guide to uh, small businesses uh, on how to manage cybersecurity in, in 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 the business, and they have a twelve step guide uh, to to for business to follow. So even if you're a large organization, and if if you've got no experience in cybersecurity, that will be a good start because it gives you, again, we talked about earlier on, a good understanding of the, of, of the basics. I and think that's a really important what you're saying is, and we'll definitely make sure, I'll, I'll look to make sure we, you know, we get that included in the show notes, the link yeah. to, to those, because sometimes people just don't know where to find them. And, yeah. and if you search, you know, it's not always going to be the first thing that comes up in, in your Google searches. <laughs> and if it's not on page one, it, it gets lost. So um, It is, and there's so many stuff out there, but I, I would yeah. recommend, Completely an ESA because a it's it's an independent body, as mm -hmm. uh, it's it's EU funded, so it's not sponsored by any uh, vendor or yeah, anything or, like that. You know, you know? Uh, for us in Europe, it's 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 mm -hmm. quite good because not only are the publications in English, uh, but they're also uh, in other all the member other state languages. Language. So uh, Estonian, it's available yeah. in Estonian. Uh, it's available in French, Germany. Mm -hmm. So all these guides are available in the different languages. And uh, uh, we talked about the the, the human risk. Like there, there, there's even they've released now mm -hmm. uh, awareness raising in a box, which mm -hmm. is a toolbox that you can use to kick off your security awareness program, and it's free. Important the, the free yeah, part. Great <laughs> price point. It's free. I can't give you a better discount than that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so I think that's that's fantastic, and I think that's a great kind of you know place to kind of you know to leave uh, the audience on is you know where resources, how to get it, you know, and mm -hmm. I, again, it's it's just finding those, and and then you can apply it yourself and find out then what's the best practice for the business, and 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 then go through that you know understanding about as we mentioned, understanding what your business your goals are, and um, what the, what the risks are. And then a lots of resources to help you make sure you kind of apply it, uh, um, and uh, you know depending on what the business goals are. So it's fantastic. Exactly. Uh, Brian, this has been amazing chatting with you. It's, uh, <laughs> I, and it's been too long since we last been had had a drink in person. So uh, yeah, I think was, it was, <laughs> was the summer last year, wasn't it? That, it was summer last year. Yes, it was uh, yeah. the first first conference. That's that right. Was, yeah. That was fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, get you always one of the things I enjoy uh, definitely about the in person is, is just getting you know surrounding yourself with such amazing people, yeah. uh, including yourself. And, oh, and one of the things that you know, usually one of the, when I'm talking to a lot of the, uh, industry, kind of um, you, you always get that you know the the fear side of things, you know. The, <laughs> but when I talk to you, I always get to that you know it makes me laugh and it makes me enjoy <laughs> enjoy what we're doing. Uh, because <laughs> sometimes we, we always have to look back and think, you know, that at, at the same time, it is a scary place to work in and you do see a lot of bad things, but sometimes we just have to sit back and just enjoy it and, and, and have those moments of laughter. Um, because oh, yeah. what, what else, <laughs> what else is life? Um, life, life, life is too short to be taken seriously, seriously, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so, so fantastic. I mean, uh, 23 years. <laughs> let's let's wow. hope we have another 23 left. <laughs> oh, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> so, uh, so, Brian, it's been awesome having you on the show. Um, and so really, hopefully, that uh, at some point in time we get to catch up this year for, for a good uh, a good Guinness and a good drink. Um, yeah. And for the audience, you know, it's been fantastic. You know, definitely 
you know, take some of uh, Brian's advice and, uh, you know, the recommendations and, um, and hopefully it's been very valuable for you. So any final thoughts of wisdom, Brian? Because I know you, any, any good jokes or anything? Oh, <laughs> any... God, no, no. My, my kids will tell me to, I don't have any good <laughs> jokes at all, you know. But uh, no, I think just uh, as you said there, Joe, is steer away from the fear and the FUD because mm. that's, not, that's not what security is about. Security is not about scaring things. Security is about getting, enabling people and enabling businesses and, enab and enabling society to, to function properly so that's very important that's it's, it's, yeah don't 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 focus on on the scared scary things let's focus on what we what we can make a difference to the world I think exactly that's, the, that's where it comes so yeah. fantastic brian it's been awesome and uh you know again i uh, look forward to seeing you for the audience again this is the 401 access tonight podcast um we've had awesome brian hornan on the show <laughs> and uh, definitely you know go follow him on social media uh, you'll always definitely get uh, lots of laughter and uh, lots of wise, uh, wise uh, advice as well. Uh, so tune in every two weeks and stay safe, take care, and see you again soon. Thank you.